You'll come up with these multi-image questions as well, where you might be asked to show that the total momentum in the, the multi-image question is zero. So points to consider here is that when you go and do the velocity, the velocity is obviously related to the distance between the images, all right? Because obviously the further it travels, the higher the velocity. And then you've got to consider something else as well, though, that the momentum then you need to take into account the mass somehow. How is the mass going to be indicated here? So I could straight away draw velocity vectors on here straight away if I wanted to go, there's a velocity vector for that one, there's a velocity vector for this one, because I just go between consecutive images here. Okay, and I'm not done drawing that very well. VB and VA. All right, and I can do the same thing here. Um, and it doesn't matter if you go from the edge of the front edge to the front edge, or from the middle to the middle, or from the back edge to the back edge, or whatever, as long as it's consistent. So looking at that, they're velocity vectors. But when we do with collisions here, we're always talking about conservation of momentum. So we need to do momentum somehow. So how do you change these velocity vectors into momentum vectors? And what you really need to do is consider the mass. Now, all the questions you're going to get here pretty much should be just uh, multiples of one particular mass. So if you look at the example here, collision between two pucks on an air table is represented in this diagram below. The mass of puck A is 2m, the mass of puck B is m. So one is a multiple of two times the other. Okay, they're going to stick together. So how can I represent these as momentum vectors? I can now start to consider the mass. So if I'm going to do this here, I need to consider A to have a 2m and B to have an m. So look, I've got B first of all. B, this vector here would actually represent not just the velocity of B, but it can actually re represent the momentum of B. So if we just rub this out here, it'd be okay to represent that as the momentum of B because it's just got a mass of M. So from front edge to front edge, we've got a momentum of B. Okay, it's important to label that and give it an arrow and go from edge to edge or center to center. So that's that one there. To do the 2M for A though, we need to do twice as long because we've got twice the mass. So to represent twice the mass then, this one velocity vector needs to actually be doubled somehow. So how do we do that? We take it over twice as many pairs of images. So we'd actually go from there and take it all the way across to here. And that's the momentum of A. And that's represented by the 2M part of it because it's doubled. Now when you do this third part here, you've got to sort of think about this. There's actually 3M in, our, in this third part because they're stuck together which means you need to go through three times as many pairs of images. So what we've got there is no good as a momentum vector. Let's change that velocity vector to a momentum vector. And we'll start it there and go over three times as many. And this is PAB dashed, it's afterwards. Okay, so the first part is to actually sort of get your lengths right and label them. So what we've done now is we've actually shown here's momentum beforehand as A and B, and this is momentum after. To answer the question, is momentum conserved then, we need to compare the totals before and the totals afterwards. So to do that, we would normally get these tip to tail. So can we do this at the moment? Let's try this out. If we clone this and take a copy up here then, you now can work out the total momentum here. So the total momentum here will be from the undo, will be from the start there, going down to the end. That's your total. So to decide whether the momentum is conserved as a total, then you need to compare that with this one here and call this P total afterwards now, because that's the only one that's there. So is that vector there the same as this? I can cheat and just drag this one and see how well it compares. And it's pretty much exactly in the same size and direction. So you can check with the ruler then, just to see if it's the same size. But in this case here, it is the same size, it is the same direction. So I'd be saying the total momentum vector beforehand is equal to the size and direction of the total momentum after, so therefore total momentum is conserved. So that's how you do those questions. So think about the velocity sizes first, but then account for the mass that's involved. Is it going to be doubled, has it got to be tripled, and so on. Okay, so you go over more pairs of images and you can actually show um, if its momentum is conserved by size and direction. So if we look at Mr. McGarry's PowerPoint here, we've got the one-dimensional questions here, some examples of two-dimensional ones, which you've already done, and then you get these sort of multi-image ones. So if you're given a question like that, your first thing is to consider what's the masses going on, and here we've got a mass of A, which is twice the mass of puck B. So you go over twice as many images here when you draw this. So that's your PA initial there. And when you come and do your PB then, you only have to go over one pair of images. Okay, and that's the initial there, PA initial, PB initial. Looking at that then as a total then, if you bring them together, you'll get a total initial one of that one. 
All right. Now, if momentum is conserved, we get the same size and direction vector afterwards. So we need to sort of represent these here again. PA, then again, it's just one pair of images. And I'd ignore this first collision here because you don't know what's going on there. Try and get away from that collision and do it further away if you can. OK. And the same over with PB. Only one pair of images there and two pairs for PA because it's twice the mass. Twice the mass. So we need to add these tip to tail here. And looking at that, then we get our total. So if you me measure this with a rule, you're going to get the same size. Is it exactly the same direction as well? So one that's in recent exams is they miss out one set of images somehow, and you've got to finish it for yourself. So looking at this, you've got a stationary object that's exploded in three pieces, P1 and P2, and they have got a mass of M. P3, though, has got a mass of 2M. OK. Uh, the multi-image uh, diagram shows the piece 2 and piece 3 after the explosion. Determine the position of the first image for piece P1 after the explosion, indicating the position on the diagram. So based on that, if this starts off with a total momentum of zero, how do you answer this sort of question then? So PI is zero. PF has got to be a sum of the three individual vectors here, P1, P2, P3. OK. Now there's a few ways you can do this, but I personally would probably rearrange this to say, OK, we're trying to find the P1 vector because we don't know what the P1 vector is. So P1 would actually be minus P2 and minus P3, or if you put it on the other side, P2 plus P3, but negative of that. OK, so we're trying to actually go in the opposite direction. So if P2 and P3 are going to go down this way as a total. Obviously, the P1 part is going to go in the opposite direction to keep the total momentum zero. So it's got to be in the negative direction. That's what this indicates. So we need to add those two together first, the P2 and the P3. And we've gone over twice as many images because piece, piece P3 has got a mass of 2M. So you go over twice as many images. Do those tip to tail like that. That's the way P2 plus P3 is going to be. We need to go opposite to that for piece P1. So piece P1 starts there. It's got to go that way in the opposite direction to that distance, obviously. OK. So we're going to get... Oh, and the other way you can do this, of course, is to go negative the vertical direction here, opposite and opposite in the horizontal, and that would also give you the result. So we should position that there. That's the way the vector would go. That's the way where the image should go. All right. So that's a good example of the sort of harder questions you can get in this momentum section. Thanks.